everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got another Father's Day themed project. However, obviously you can use this for anything. You can decorate this in more feminine colors and prints. It's entirely up to you. It can be used, well, I'm using it as a bottle kind of caddy, but you can use this as storage. It's a really handy storage piece. It's come together really well. It's solid. It's all made from chipboard. So it's got a very similar, I guess, yeah, in the way that I've put it together, it's very similar to the shed, the little craft shed storage box, which so many of you have really enjoyed. So I kind of go, you know, if I start using chipboard, I kind of have a bit of a run with it and seem to make a few things. So I thought I'm going to yeah, give this a go. I, wa I wanted a way that I could give heavy bottles of beer as a gift and it's something that is just really hard to do unless you use a chipboard. You can use 300, 350 GSM cardstock but you do kind of have to double it up and also strengthen the base um, and it can just take some time whereas this came together in no time and um, it's using very very thick chipboard which is the one that I get from Every Crafts a Pound. All of that I will talk you through in a moment but these are your standard bottle sizes so these are um, 500 mils yeah, I think they're all 500 mils. This one here, I think, is a little bit bigger. Oh no, 500 mils, but it is a wider bottle, but it will hold them. So the width of these here, I've only done one divider. The width is two and I think it's two and seven eight, something like that. Again, I'll go through it all with you. Now I haven't done a divider going that way because I just think it's going to get a little bit too fiddly. All I'm going to do is just pop some cardboard in between these bottles here because ideally afterwards it's going to then be used again and you know you can put more things in it so if you want to do the extra dividers by all means you can but I'm just going to keep it um, with just the one but as you can see it holds those bottles really well and it does hold them I've carried them around I know they're empty but I did put water in and it will hold them this is solid nothing is going anywhere and once you see how I put it together the two sides are actually attached underneath with a hinge which is concealed so there's no way the base is going to fall out so it is really really strong I'm confident this is going to hold these bottles so yeah let me show you how to make it Okay, so you're going to need some papers. So the ones I'm using are from the World at Heart 12 by 12 paper pad. I've had this a while. It's by first edition. Um, it's just a lovely collection, really. It's got some really nice kind of background papers so and like wood grain so I'm using that one today which I'll show you now again I'll share links for that one if I can find them because it is an older paper pack so I've already gone ahead and done a lot of them like I always like to do okay so I'm going to be using this wood grain one here so two pieces of 12 by 12 um, you need for this one in terms of your pattern paper then you'll need two pieces of chipboard that are six by eleven and three quarters this chipboard is what I buy from every crafts a pound so you get I think it's four a4 sheets two 12 by 12 sheets and then you get eight by eight and four by uh, six by six sorry so it's really good um, yeah I love it this particular size is the it's I think it's three mil um, it's it's kind of right in the middle of the two to three, but I'm pretty sure it's it's. I think it's three because I've got other two mil ones and they're a bit flimsier. This one you can hardly bend. It's a really really strong one. So two pieces of that size, and that is going to be what we use to create the large sides of the caddy. And then you will need that's all the decorative paper pieces. Then you need two pieces that are six by four and you'll also want four pieces of decorative paper the same size so I've already decorated these sides of it and then on the other side here I have my other pieces of decorative paper to cover okay so that's my four pieces and then two pieces of chipboard and then for the base you want a piece of six by six and also something to cover both sides so I've covered one side and I've just used craft card and I've just dressed it so the easiest way to do that is I'm just using the frayed burlap this is just one of the distressed inks and I just literally went around with the, the ink pad itself so you can use a blending brush if you want and then I just swiped over the top and you can see there you just get a really nice effect so it's a very quick way to distress and you also want to wipe the ink pad or use your you know your blending brushes along the actual side as well just to kind of dirty that up um, yeah, if you want to okay also I just want to say for anybody who hasn't cut chipboard before 
um, because I've obviously already prepared all of my pieces, but if I just grab some scrap, so I've just got this piece here. This is the trimmer that I use for cutting chipboard and I've actually got the, whenever I've used the blades and then they become blunt, I just put a black pen mark on them and I use them to cut you know, things like this because they actually still work really well. And you just hold it down, you have to run it over a few times and then turn it over make sure I've got the right because it will you can just snap it off if you want to but if you just pop it back in and just run over the top it comes away nicely there okay so yeah always use your older blades or keep something like I said this now really is just all I use because I use my guillotines for my paper so this just stays like this for when I use it for chipboard you will also want a piece of six by seven and a half this is just a strong cardstock and this is what we're going to use to attach the two larger sides okay but once we get to that then you can decide what it is you want to use okay so you are going to have two pieces of this size that I mentioned and what we want to do here is we want to create this shape so the easiest way to do that I'm using a pen just because it shows up well in the video so you've got your six by eleven and three quarters okay coming up each side from the bottom here you want to come up four inches so it's the same width sorry, the same height as these pieces here. So if I just lay that there, right from the bottom, you'll see it. we're starting here, which is four inches up. So on each side, you just wanna mark a pen mark at four inches. Then along the very top, this is obviously six inches wide. You wanna come in two inches and put a little pen mark and then come in that side there and put a pen mark. So I've got a pen mark at two and four. And then you wanna come down two inches from each of those markers, so as straight as you can. Come down and put a little marker there. I'm just going to re-line that up like so. And again, put a little marker there at two and then just draw a pen mark down to it. And then you're going to join up these two markers down to that four inch one that you've done at the bottom here. Okay, so obviously I've done mine, but that is then what you have. And then the easiest way to cut this is with your pen knife and ruler. So I'm just going to line my ruler down here and just make sure that's nice and secure and just cut it off. You may need to go over it a few times. This is pretty, sh um, this knife is pretty sharp. You will feel once you hit your mat on the bottom. Obviously make sure you have a um, you know, self-healing mat or some, some protective mat. Okay, you can see there where it's cut away and then I'm just gonna come up from that other one okay and then that all comes away nicely so I'm just going to do the same on the other side okay so now I have my side so you need to do that twice so you will have your two like I have here next you need to then create your shaped paper to be able to stick on top and the easiest way to do that is just trace around now what I would say is trace around each one separately so don't do what, like this one trace it here um, and then trace it four times to cover the two sides on this and the two sides on that because you've cut this freehand each one might be slightly different so I'm going to trace this one on one piece and then I would trace this one on another piece okay because yeah like I said they may just be slightly different so this one here was just traced around this one and you'll see it just fits on there perfectly whereas this one might be slightly different to that one there so all I've done is just pop it right down in the bottom corner where you can see I thought I was out of shot then right down like so so almost two sides are already kind of done for you and then I'm just going to draw around the rest okay and again although they should be an exact mirror image of each other one side might be just slightly different so I would just put one on here and one on there and then turn this one upside down and again line it right up in the very corner there and draw down and just draw around it again like so and obviously you know that that's two but then you just do that okay so then we know we're sticking them onto the right side that we traced and you want to do that again with your other piece all right then you're just going to cut them out and just cut slightly in from the pencil mark because you've probably made it slightly bigger because 
the pencil has to rest against this and it will stick out ever so slightly. You see there how far a pencil sticks out. So if you cut in, then um, yeah, it will just shrink it down and make it fit better. And anything you do still have overhanging, we will trim off. Okay, you can discard all the paper unless you like to keep those bits for your scrap. And then you want to stick just one side down. Okay, you don't want to stick both, so I'm just going to stick the one that says one. So I'm going to stick that right over here. Now I like to use my tacky glue for this just because I find that this, once it's stuck, it's stuck. It's not coming off and because this is intended to last for a very long time, I like to use this. Now it does stay tacky, so if it oozes out the side, um, even when you wipe it away, it may still be sticky, but I'll show you a good way to tidy that up. And really focus on the edges because you want them to be you know, sealed down. You don't want them be, to be lifting or anything. Okay, so line that all up. And then I'm just gonna go over it all with my bone folder. Again, just making sure all that glue is spread out. And then what you can do is if you feel anything that's sticky, like I can feel a sticky stickiness there, these are brilliant. And these are the adhesive removers or uh, Xyron, I think it is, is the rubber. I'll share links to it, but now that's completely gone. So although you can't see it, you, you will be able to feel it. Like up here, I can feel it's quite sticky. And because this will always stay tacky, you want to try and do this because this is when, this is the areas where dust would end up settling over time. So again, if it is a decorative piece, it is handy to have one of these, um, these rubbers. I love mine. I wouldn't be without it now. Okay, and then if you flip it over, if you've got anything overhanging, like I've got little bits of white, you can just about see there. Again, the easiest way to remove that is to use your knife and just line it up against the chipboard and it will come, obviously come away perfectly and you get a really nice finish. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now you want to distress it up a little bit. So again, I'm just bringing in my actual ink pad itself and just running it around all the corners. This particular colour actually dries a bit lighter. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, I really like this one. And again, go along the sides as well. Okay, so what you should have now is two pieces that you've decorated on just one side. Next, you wanna create the hole. It's easy to do that now while we've got it kind of flat. And um, yeah, I just find it easy to do as much as you can really when things are, you know, not, um, made up yet so I'm just going to sit this over the top and just trace through the hole I've already made so basically you just want to punch a hole in the middle there and then trace it onto the next one that way you know that you'll have them both the same and then because it's chipboard this is the crocodile and it is brilliant for very very thick materials I never have any problems with this if you don't have this though then what I would say is if you grab um, like a pokey tool where can I find can never find what I want when I want to yeah there we go so just something like this and just maybe kind of work a hole into it first and then just kind of make it bigger you could use you can use some hole punches but you might have to really work them quite a bit so once you've made the hole now because I'm going to be using the wooden dowels that I've been um, talking about these are from the works again all the products that I'm using will be the links will be shared where I can these are slightly bigger than the crocodile hole that I have. So the easiest way that I found to make it bigger is I just got a normal pencil and just started literally twisting it through. And eventually the pencil will go right the way through. Like so. And just twist it around. And now my dowel is going to fit nicely through there and go all the way across to the other one. Okay, but we're going to cut all that and do all that nearer the time. But if you at least get the holes ready now, it's going to make it much easier later on. Okay, so with these other two pieces, you need to decorate two sides of them as well. So you should have left over two pieces of paper to stick down on the other sides of these two pieces, and then two pieces of this shape to stick down on the backs of these. Okay, so I'm going to pop all that to one side. Next, we want our base. This piece of six by seven and a half and the two of the larger ones, so these two here, okay? So first of all, 
what you want to be doing is the side that I've decorated, this is what I want facing me. I haven't done anything with this piece because I'm going to be sticking it right over this kind of cream piece of cardstock and then I can distress it up and you know if I need to but because it's on the bottom I'm not too worried. Now you want to sit it in the middle and it will be exactly the same width but you want to make sure that you've got I think it's three quarters of an inch overhang. I don't know why I'm using this ruler because it looked nice but it doesn't actually really work well. Yeah three quarters of an inch you want overhanging on each side. So you want to add some glue to this. Okay so again just make sure that it's as you know even as you can get it. These are going to act as hinges it's just they're almost like a bit of a reinforcement. I wanted the side pieces that are going to have the handle to be obviously they're connected to the base but I wanted them to be connected with a piece of kind of good strong card as well as um, the hot glue. Flip it over and again just make sure that that is all stuck down and then you just want to fold up the sides. So the decorative side needs to face up because that's just so it looks nice when people kind of look inside it really. And just take off any glues. But yeah, do get it all distressed and everything before you know you stick it down. Next what's going to happen, these two again with the pattern facing up because you're going to decorate the outsides once it's all put together, it's really easy. Now I'm going to try and make sure I can keep this all in shot. When you bring up this this is going to be lying inside here, so it's going to be against it like that. It's not going to be on top like that. You want to make sure it's right on the side, okay? Now, if you bring it up and lie it next to it, like so, and then if you hold it in place but bring it back out, that gap that forms is where we want to then stick this piece you know, underneath here. That is the gap that will allow us to bring that back up and not crack this paper below. Now mine is already stained because the ink I've used and I think with the glue is actually left a mark for me so I can just now just literally put some glue all along there like so and then just stick that down like so. But you have to have this gap. It's about one eighth of an inch. It will be the thickness of the chipboard. Okay, and like I said, it's, it's two to three mil, which is about one eighth of an inch, just shy of it. If I lie that in there, that yeah, it is, it's one eighth of an inch. But depending on the chipboard you're using, yours might be very, you know slightly different. But now if I bring that up, it sits in there really nicely. And then I've got this hinge. And it's just gonna help hold, you know, basically just to keep it all nice and strong. But I'm really pleased that that's come together well. So you want to do the same with this side here. Again, I can see a line that is formed all the way down there from the ink. So I'm just going to add my glue. So now we can already see how, how cool is this? And it, it really does look, I think the paper, you know, that wood effect there and the base is starting to really come together. So next I'm going to pop it on its side and we're going to start sticking these in. Now again, you want to stick the pattern side in first. I just thought it's easy to decorate that way and the outside is going to be very, very easy. But these pieces are actually going to sit inside here. So they're going to be on top of the base and inside these two sides and it should all perfectly fit, which it does, like so. Now we're going to be using hot glue and we're going to be putting it together very similar in a very similar way to how I done the craft shed and also how I do a lot of my storage boxes. So don't worry that any glue might be visible because these hinges, the, you know, you're going to need four that are one inch by four and one eighth of an inch. You need the extra one eighth because that basically is the height of this base. And once they are on there, once obviously it's decorated, it's going to look really nice. So that will also, you know, cover the glue. So. What I'm going to do first of all is make sure your pattern's facing inwards is run a bead of hot glue all the way along here like so and just stick that one down. And if you can wipe away any excess glue just before it's starting to really kind of cure you should be able to pick it off which I have and that stays there perfectly now. So once we put glue on these two sides, obviously that's going to really hold in place like that. So next you want to do the other side. 
Okay, so that's my two sides, they're nice and strong, and then each of these sides is going to come up, and you may need to just pull them out a little bit, but they are going to stick perfectly, and already you can see how nice it's looking inside. So, this is going to now, where it starts to get a little bit fiddly, I guess, you need to run glue down both of these sides, because once you lift up this piece, that's it. So, it's a bit like the she shed that i done, you have to kind of act a bit quicker, so I'm just going to run my glue there. But again, you've got your hinges going on this as well, so that will also help. But I'm happy with that, and just bring it up and make sure that they both obviously line up perfectly at each end, like so. I'm really happy with that. You can see there if I bring it up on the sides, how that all looks. And again, we're going to be covering all this and distressing all of the corners and edges, so it's all going to, you know, you should be, you know, struggle really to see where it's all kind of joined up. Um, and because the glue's clear, I mean, there's the odd little bit that's come out, but you can't see, you can't see that glue in there at all. So again, do the same with the other side. Okay, that is so strong, guys. This is, it literally feels like, you know, plywood. It's just, it's brilliant. I love this so much. So now you just need to decorate all of your four sides. So I've got my two pieces here. So these are going to go on the front here, like so. Again, the chipboard should be exposed. I mean, my intention wasn't to cover that because you're just dressing it all. So that's for the front and the back. And then these pieces, obviously I've got number two there, so that's going to cover that piece completely. You can see that, and the other one. So I'm going to go and get them all stuck down. Okay, so there is my caddy all covered, really pleased with it, and now I need to add my little kind of hinges, and these are, like I said, act as a, a reinforcement, but also quite decorative as well. So I'm going to go around and stick these down, so I just, um, again, if I forgot the measurements, it's one by four and one eighth of an inch, that one eighth of an inch is important, because it does give you that little bit of extra height, and then score along the one inch side at one, at half an inch, sorry, and then just distress them, so I've already distressed all of these, and you just stick them on each side and it's exactly the same as what I did with that little shed and um, yeah, like I said, it hides all the glue but also does look good as well. Okay, so there's all my corners, so now I'm going to go around and just dress it even more because I've got obviously the base here which is obviously very crisp and once everything's been stuck it's got a bit of a different obviously look but if you start now messing it all up it really does blend everything together you can see there like I said this particular burlap one does go on darker and then um, kind of dries lighter but I'm going to go around now and just really mess up all of these corners Okay, so I've messed that all up a bit more now and I'm really pleased with that. I think it looks great. So next I'm just going to go back through those holes with my pencil just to kind of help them along. I actually quite like the way, see that nice kind of distressed look there as well. So that's going to frame the, you know, the doweling when it goes through. Okay, so these are all cut to the same length when you buy them. You get 10 in a pack. The length of these are, yeah, so yeah, 30 centimetres, or just over 30 centimetres, 12 inches. So I don't want it to be that long. Obviously you may want to, that's entirely up to you. But I just want a little bit overhanging because I'm gonna plan on wrapping some rope around the edges there just to kind of cover any glue, but to stop it obviously, you know, falling out. But I think that's enough to be able to hold it. So I'm going to just roughly work out what I need and then I'll let you know. Okay, so I'm gonna cut mine to, well, that's eight and a quarter, so yeah, eight and a quarter, okay. So as I showed you in my gift bag that I made, I just start it off with my knife. I need to change this blade because it's really been put through the mill with cutting all these projects lately. So I just kind of work it around all of the edge. And then I've just been able to snap off the end there. And you can see just where I didn't get the knife. So I have got some pliers as well, but I'm just going to use that for now. I have this little bit of sandpaper and I'm just going to 
just flatten the end off there like so and then I'm going to just stress the whole thing in this so just stress up the ends and then I'm going to just rub the whole thing in my ink pad okay you may want to paint yours it's entirely up to you but I just want to keep it all matching so now if I slide that through once I add a bit of glue and the rope around it I think that's really cool and you could have something dangling off the side if you wanted so yeah I like that a lot okay I'm going to use some of this rope here that I've got it's £1.29 for eight meters roughly and it's by that craft company which I mentioned before they usually stock it in the range but I'm going to just twist some rope around the very ends here just to stop that wooden stick sliding off like so you can see that's what I'm going to do so I'm just going to add it's starting to unravel some hot glue so you just want to make sure that you've got a nice even overhang there you go so you can see what I've done there I've just stuck a little ball of kind of string just at the end so I'm going to do the same on the other side Okay, so that's all done. Next we need to put the dividers in, which is really easy. Okay, so I was just crafting away and realized I didn't hit record, but this piece in the middle here that you'll see I've just used is five and three quarters by four. So it's the same height as these side pieces. And then it's come in by a quarter of an inch, which is taking basically into account these two widths of this chipboard, which is on top of this six inch piece. So if you take a quarter of an inch away, you're left with five and three quarters, which is this width here. And it means it fits in there perfectly and doesn't, your sides don't bow out. So what I've done to stick it in is I've just done a bead of the art glitter glue along three sides, just the sides here and the bottom. That way when you slide it in, you know, the, the, this glue is going to, you know, kind of slide on the sides, but it's going to dry clear and it's, it's already really stuck. It's just setting a little bit there and any of the kind of glue you might be able to see inside there is going to dry completely clear. But I think in terms of dividers, I'm just going to keep that one. If I'm really pleased with how this is all coming together so far, it fits the bottles perfectly. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to do the other dividers. What I might do just so they don't jangle is just put some card in between these two, just so they don't kind of, you know, hit against each other but I'm not going to do another divider I think that works and it does it holds really well I know these are empties but I you can just tell you'll, you'll know yourself what you the kind of weight you can get away with it with so I'm now going to look for some nice decorative kind of hardware for the front and a nice little topper okay so I am almost there so I've just gone and punched out a load of silver circles using my punch here so this is just a yeah normal hole punch and then when you have your little circle I'm just using the back side of my knife here and basically I'm just as if I'm cutting it but obviously it's blunt doing a cross through the middle and it will give you a very small looking screw and I've stuck them all along the front there and you can see and I think they look really effective and then I went over them with my the same distressed ink so I'm just gonna lean this one and then I'm just gonna add some glue and it's going just here and just stick that one again that's completely optional and then I've gone and stamped this one here which says here's to a top chap now I don't want to add any bows but I do want to add something to make it look like a tag because obviously that's what it is so I'm just going to punch the hole there and then again I'm going to distress it a little bit with this colour so just catching the ends and it just pulls everything together I'm just going to put a little bit around like that and then I'm going to go back over it with that one there we go just want it to really you know all blend in well and then yeah that's going to look nice and then I've just got the same rope and I'm actually this time unraveling it so and I will cut off so much and then but I want it all unraveled like so and I'm going to try and get all of that through here and then just feed it back through like so and again dirty the tops of that up okay. 
don't think I'm going to need that much hanging over, so I'm going to trim that much off. Just really let it kind of, even those then strands can all like kind of break up as well. Just, you know, I want it all looking messy. It's going to stick on the front here on some foam just to lift it because obviously that's quite um, dimensional anyway, the knot. I've just got some little squares here. I'm just going to pop a couple on the back and a couple more again and then stick that one. I'm going to do it on an angle, I reckon about there. And again, I'm just going to really finish it all off now everything's together. So if I just bring it up there, you can see the front and I am so pleased with how this has come together. It makes a beautiful presentation box, little caddy for all of these bottles, but also afterwards it's a nice little storage um, piece as well. So like I said at the beginning, you don't have to have this for what I've obviously used it for. This would make a really nice storage piece in your craft room or, you know, just for anybody. And you can put other gifts in here. You could put flowers in here anything you know I think it's just such a lovely way to display something so yeah super pleased with this one so I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you like my other idea to use these dowels and um, yeah I hope it's inspired you but thank you for watching please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye